OK, so we're at about T minus eight days until the GA Special Congress will meet to decide the future of the GA Football Championship. There are other things up for grabs and for decision, but the most important thing at the moment on the Special Congress, Clar, is whether or not people are going to vote for Plan B, essentially, at this point. It looks like that's really the only viable option. And Plan B, if you don't know by now, is uh, the league becoming the championship and it opens up a host of possibilities. Uh, we've certainly been advocating strongly that people would consider voting for uh, Plan B. We've spoken all the way back two and a half weeks ago to Tony McEntee, and we've done something on it pretty much every day. There's about five and a half hours of material if you don't know or you're uncertain or you want to see both sides of the, of the debate teased out on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash off the ball. But we wanted to go back today to Conor O'Donoghue, who was part of the uh, committee that actually came up with Proposal A, Proposal B, and obviously the option of staying with the status quo. Connor, you're welcome back to the programme. Thanks a million for joining us again. Thanks, Chair. It's been quite the 24 hours. Um, it seems like things are definitely ratcheting up, and we're given to understand that the President himself of the GAA will be making either a public appearance on Monday for an interview, or certainly that there will be a press briefing at some point next week. But last night, the GAA's uh, Finance Director spoke with the County Board finance officers. I think I'm correct in that. Certainly was a meeting with the, the various financial people at which point their finances were made public uh, or certainly they've leaked to the public domain. I don't know if they've actually been published publicly yet and we now know a good bit more about what the GEA thinks will happen when it comes to what would uh, the financial implications of Proposal B going through. Um, for clarity's sake, they disagreed with your estimations and maybe we can talk a bit about that. First off, what did you make of the figures that were, were became public last night, to, to choose my words carefully? Yeah, um, I think it's really healthy, Chair, that those uh, figures have been put out and that uh, the guys in Crow Park on the financial side and the provincial side obviously came together and uh, produced something and put it out in the public domain. I think it's it's good to have this debate. It's good to have... Uh, an understanding of, of where the finances lie. It's good to have an understanding of the kind of stretch, et cetera, um, that, that you might need to think about in terms of what one proposal does versus another. I mean, I'm delighted that they're out. I mean, I, I, I obviously did something and put something together uh, with a couple of people um, just based on the fact that there was this gap perhaps in, uh, in information and people were asking questions, legitimate questions, we put it out, our assumptions are up there. Um, they're really detailed, and I'd love to see the assumptions in more detail. Obviously, I've heard some of the commentary around it. I wasn't on the call. Um, but obviously, the assumptions that we put together are up, they're out there, they're very detailed. We understood and understand that when you do that and you put it into the public domain, you do act as a as a as a public coconut chai. That's part of 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 what you do, etc. That's 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 the nature of it. I've no problem with that. People questioning the figures. We're in a debate now about that financial side, and I I think that's healthy. Okay, so for for clarity's sake, one of the most striking aspects of of your estimations were that there's potential for up to ten million a year extra revenue in attendance alone, if Plan B goes through. And just to quickly recap on that, the the basis. Of your figures, um, I, it might be better if you tell us what the basis for your figures were rather than me doing it, because I'm, I'm going to do a cat handed version of it, and you're right there. So, what were the basis for your figures? So what we did was the 24 games of the Super 8 were the most commensurate games programs for Division 1 games that are, um, I suppose, the championship in the summer. It's all of the, I suppose, the top teams in the country, the Kerry's, the Mayo's, the Dublins, knocking heads against each other. Now, the, the, the Super 8, I suppose, the, the, the issue with the Super 8 was that um, there was a number of dead rubbers very early because there's no consequence after uh, if you lose one or two games, etc. But we decided to run with those figures anyway. Um, so we ran with those figures, which roughly comes at 18,000 um, for each of those games. That includes some of the, the, the games at the very end, the, the famous Corcross Common game, the Dublin Throne game, where there was nothing at stake at all for either team um, and, if, and and attendance figures would have been you know low quite a bit lower as a result we're talking about a competition where there's get, get our, a place at stake uh, to get into the all-ireland series we're talking about a competition where you could get relegated and that would have serious implications um for the team financially and otherwise so we don't think that it was unreasonable to to do that as a as a start so you built so what, in you built in the dead rubbers that, like that i think that's important to point out and just to labor the point there were loads of those not loads of those games but that third round of games didn't mean a lot in many cases uh, kildare obviously made the super eights after the newbridge and nowhere thing and by the time their third fixture rolled around there weren't a huge amount of people going so you've included those figures 
in, of those games in your estimations to level out the ones where we did see 30,000 say in uh, Fitzgerald Stadium in Killarney in summer when we saw two teams of equal standing go up against each other yeah so they're 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 all included a separate day just went through something and we handballed through a couple of just guesstimated uh, figures based on summer championship attendances for for um for those games compared them the other one was higher but said look we'll go with the we'll go with the super eight numbers from there um so the other the second thing we did was the ticket prices for that was 25 so we uh, put a 20 to 25 percent what way you look at it, uh, a concession discount on it um as well to, to reduce that further um now it's just to be clear what crow park and I, I can go straight on to that if you like they disagree with that process and they come up and said that no 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 you can't use that you've got to use the actual national league figures from february and um, give a little bit extra um I think they put 20 percent but you've got to massively discount that back then uh, and then they use the 20 euro the 20 euro figure which is already a dis discounted figure and this is my understanding because i haven't seen anything i unless there's something that's produced i don't know and then said i think an average ticket price of 11 euro including concessions so that's the that's the that's the um the way that they've they've looked at it and they're perfectly entitled to do that and um, so um, I disagree. I disagree profoundly. I believe there's much more value in the games program in the summer than has been described. But that's my opinion. Um, these are assumptions based on the future. I've based my assumption based on uh, on the evidence. They've based their assumptions based on different evidence. And they're perfectly entitled to do that. There's a debate. I suppose the central part which I took from it was those assumptions that, that have been forwarded by Crow Park are very very conservative i would say and that's fine and yet they still arrived at a number that meant uh, the, uh, that that all of the, the various proposals would run very similar to each other according to what they've said and that's fine also but it does answer the question that brian mcavoy and others asked publicly and were right to do so where are the figures show me the figures they've been sh everyone has been shown two sets of figures based on assumptions into the future um, those assumptions are things that are unknowable right now. We base them on, on evidence uh, that we think is reasonable. And I don't doubt uh, that, that, that Crow Park also feel, or that certainly Jer feels that those numbers that he's gotten from the provincial uh, uh, CFOs, et cetera, and they would have all sitting down as I understand over the last day or two uh, to go through figures. So I've, I, I, they're perfectly entitled to put them out there and it's up to you or I to, to, to argue the case after that. OK, so I guess we don't know how many people will show up to matches in the summer between teams of similar standard, it, apart from the one bit of experiment information that we do have, which is the Super 8s, and it doesn't seem completely unreasonable to use those. It would have seemed... Can I just come in? That there's actually two pieces of information okay. on that. I've, I've the Super 8s. The second piece of information is the uh, provincial uh, hurling championship. And we had a very similar debate and history invents itself very quickly. Just, it, just, it comes back very quickly. People said that when there was no more knockout, it was going to kill the Munster Hurling Championship. So, I mean, I have Munster Hurling Championship figures there and I was interested, obviously, Kieran Leddy, who's also entitled to, to, to come out with whatever figure, figures he wants to come out with. So in 2016, the Munster Hurling receipts were 1.9 million. In 2019, the last pre-COVID year, there were 4.2 million. So... I think that's a second very serious data point that we could rely on. So what they're telling us is that the Senior Intercounty Hurling Championship that brought in 4.2 million, um, the, the, the games in that alone uh, would not, would, sorry, would exceed by a million euros all of the football games in all of the championships, the 112 games. That's hard for me to believe, but listen, don't, don't, don't everyone has an opinion on that so it's not one data points there there are a number of data points but again this is the future so we don't know what the future is is going to look like and people are entitled to put whatever figures they want into the domain and it's up to as i say people to debate those then after that yeah i, I don't know off the top of my head what the ticket prices are for those monster championship hurling matches or if they were the same as what the league matches would have been or if there's actually a step up for championship matches and if whether or not people are actually willing to pay a bit more for uh, championship matches when they understand that it's that it is championship matches it, it, it does speak to i guess um 
some difficulty in terms of the, the systems and us knowing exactly what the attendance numbers are and and maybe look that's a, a, an IT conversation for a different day and, and even more uh, convoluted than the, the fixtures conversation to reach at this point but to boil it down worst case scenario if, if the figures were 11 euros blended ticket price for people attending and the attendances were only the same as they were in winter time in, in uh, February and March when the weather's no good versus when the weather is good and you might actually go on your holidays to watch a match. It, let's assume that the figures are exactly the same. The money coming from this championship for Plan B would be close to the same as it would be. I think there is more in, in the GAA's calculations for the status quo, like a slight amount more, but is it is it significant enough to sway people to the point where, oh no, we can't try this? No, I think it's a 4% difference or thereabouts that they've come up with. Um, yeah, the, the, I think that's what that's that's the number that they've arrived at, and then they, they've added significantly more for for um, uh, provincial championship games uh, than 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 obviously the league's championship games. Again, they're entitled to make that assumption, and um, we have to argue the point here. Or otherwise, we don't. Nobody knows what exactly the figures will be for next year. We can only make, I suppose, an argument based on what we know in the past. I've done that. I didn't do it to annoy people, Jer. Um, and perhaps I've done that a little bit, and I'm not I'm genuinely not trying to do that. The interest here is the, the the only interest that we have here is to get a vigorous debate as to what's best for the association, for the players, for the supporters, and the administrators whose role it is, whether they are full time administrators or they're volunteers, is to serve ultimately the 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 the, 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 um, the players and supporters. That's that's what this is about. We've got a problem. We've got a problem for a number of years. We've got to get on now and start fixing it. This is an opportunity to fix it. And um, we'll never get a better opportunity in my view. So we have to do it. So those figures are out there. As I say, I'm delighted that that that, that we're having this debate. I'm delighted that those numbers are out there. I'm delighted that people can interrogate those numbers um, themselves and make whatever reasonable judgment they feel is is, is correct or otherwise. And then we can make an informed decision. I think the key thing here, Jerry, is that counties were being told perhaps that uh, the new proposals would uh, dramatically kill revenues. I don't know how they could justify that argument, but that argument was being made. Um, and I think that's been debunked, whether you think that I'm absolutely suddenly optimistic about the future or if you think that the other figures that Chair and his team and the provincial guys came together to produce, if you think they're different, or they're sorry, they're the right figures, either way, you can have a little bit more comfort that now the numbers have been crunched and have been done. Okay. Uh, one of the arguments that I'm hearing at the moment is that it's nearly, it's nearly right. Cara Kane made this very eloquently, that it's nearly right, but we should put it on pause and come back with something better. I've heard other people say, uh, we actually need to give this more time. We haven't had time to consider it. And then there's a, a counter argument to that, that it feels that there's a bit of a bang of now or never, that actually stuff that gets beaten doesn't really come back. And the whole notion that we're going to somehow get everybody to agree at some point in the future around an idea that hasn't been thought through just yet, but that people are kind of, oh, I like this idea, but how about we try this other thing? Um, it seems like it, that the now or never thing might actually be more more accurate. Is there any comfort that could be given that if this and needs tweaks in years two and three, that that just gets written in or there's an amendment from the floor saying this is in for a three-year period. Is there any way to politically help this to get through? I mean, the first thing is that um, obviously the, it's it's quite a seismic change in the way that, uh, that the competitions are structured and, and organised. I mean, I can see some tweaks that I'd love to see myself in it. This is a political... Um, compromise for lots of people in lots of different things trying to accommodate all of the various um i suppose red lines that, that that lots of people have on this championship reform structure but if we get this through the the tweaks are easy much easier from here because clearly um the biggest issue has been the demand i suppose that um everything had to run through provinces and that's it nothing else no matter if you're talking about a heavyweight, lightweight, middleweight, whatever whatever else, it's provinces are nothing. So once that demand is off the table, a, a, a lot of, a lot of um, uh, 
tweaks, as you call them, and various streamlining things can be done really, really easy, I would say. And again, just to reiterate, the provincial championships are there and they remain there as well. So um, there may be, and I think people appear to be happy with that as a structure, but there's still a demand for a link into the, into the other. And that can, it's very difficult to do that. Um, it's impossible to do it without making a, a hugely difficult algorithm that feeds into stuff that then ultimately doesn't make any more sense. So, so the provincial championships, I think the next group that comes into this is a very good chance they'll say, listen, fellas, the provincial championship has had its day. You need to get on with it. And there might be no provincial championship. This is putting in place a structure that enshrines the provincial championship as a part of our competitions for years to come. So the competitions after that, as, as Cara said, they can be tweaked along the way and they there will be an evolving, uh, I suppose, consensus about how that might look. But if we get there, it's so much easier from that point. Otherwise, we're going into the twilight zone again. And that would be, I suppose, from a player's perspective and from supporters' perspective, it would be really, really disastrous and disappointing. So we are, I suppose, as that horrible proverbial thing goes, we are we are, and we, we've got a moment now that we can take advantage of it. We've gone through a number of the different debates in a vigorous way. We spent the last two or three years going through this in minutia, and we are now at a point where there's a, a decision that can be made to transform the way our Gaelic football competitions are arranged for the benefit of players and supporters. We've been talking about it for years. We have to get on with it now. Connor, good stuff. We leave it there. Thanks a million. Okay, appreciate it, Jer. Thank you.